Hey, 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 it's me again. Hope you are doing really well. I am in the garden again. The sky is blue, the sun is shining, and I'm wearing my Made in the 70s t-shirt, so I'm feeling quite good. Um, because it's so nice outside, I just thought I have to record another clip from this excellent book, The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard. And um, I was reading through it yesterday and just appreciating it as I always do. And if you haven't got this book yet, buy it on Amazon. Um, as, you, as I said in the previous clip, it's a bit messed up. <laughs> it's embarrassing actually, but it, it's a mixture of water from my bag and a banana, I think. And I thought, well, I only want this one. I really like this because it's got bigger writing. <laughs> um, my eyesight's not brilliant anymore. And um, just like the layout so much. And I looked it up on Amazon and it was almost 30 pounds, which I guess I must have paid ages ago. I can't believe it. Um, so I only really want this one and I'm not gonna pay that money again. So I'm gonna have to um, put up with it and so are you. Um, but you can buy it for under a fiver. Um, and it, I think it contains everything you need to know about manifesting. Every time I read it, I get a different insight on it. It's just so clear, so logical, and so deeply spiritual. It's perfection. I should advertise it. I am advertising it. Um, but I don't want to... Oh, I, I say I don't want to read another Neville Goddard book until I've got this deeply ingrained in my psyche, but I would actually because um, he's just so good. But I'm gonna keep reading it and I'm gonna write the key points to each chapter and go over it over and over again until it's a, a way of being. So I was looking at it last night and thinking, which chapter should I record for you? And I know I've recorded so many already. I don't know um, if I'm repeating myself because I'm too lazy to check. Um, so I think I'm going to record the truth that sets you free. all good. Probably have already recorded this, but here we go anyway. Um, the drama of life is a psychological one in which all the conditions, circumstances and events of your life are brought to pass by your assumptions. Since your life is determined by your assumptions, you are forced to recognise the fact that you are either a slave to your assumptions or their master. To become the master of your assumptions is the key to undreamed of freedom and happiness. You can attain this mastery by deliberate conscious control of your imagination. You determine your assumptions in this way. Form a mental image a picture of the state desired, of the person you want to be. Concentrate your attention upon the feeling that you are already that person. First, visualize the picture in your consciousness, then feel yourself to be in that state as though it actually formed your surrounding world. By your imagination, that which was a mere mental image is changed into a seemingly solid reality. Now, years ago, I was listening to um, the hypnotist, Paul McKenna, and he always has an audio CD with his books. He's definitely listened to Neville Goddard for sure, because he uses this visualization process um, but as I remember, what he did was um, when you're, say, if you want to be more confident, you're imagining your 
new confident self in front of you. So it's like you can see that new person and then you walk into it and feel what it would be like and what you would see. And then you see another image of yourself, even more confident, and you walk into that image, feel what it would be like, what you'd see. And then the last one is massively confident. And I did feel really good afterwards. I didn't keep it up. Um, another bee somewhere. Sounds like it's freaking out a bit. Don't come near me. Um, so that's just slightly different to Neville Goddard because he says about um, you're in it straight away and you're seeing through the new concept of self. But you could start off by, um, you've got to really imagine what you would be like after all and then walk into that image. That's an idea. Anything else about this? Um, yeah, just feeling that this is me now. Um, I am this person right now. So to have that focus on the present moment, you're actually it right now, because that's the whole idea that you, it starts to happen in your everyday reality. And then the feeling that comes from the concept of your new self is going to draw to you the circumstances you want in your life. So you start with your, um, image of how you are, your concept of self, and then everything else should come with the assumption that you are um, what you want to be. The great secret is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention firmly and repeatedly focused on the object to be accomplished controlled imagination so not wandering off all over the place that's that takes practice and attention um, crowding all other ideas out of your consciousness it's got to really become an obsession I think um, if you're going to focus your attention on it so much that you're going to be thinking from the new um, state. Because that's what he speaks about, isn't it? Just um, you've got to think from new ideas which will come up with the new concept of self. Sun's gone in, not so brilliant now, but I can see. Um, what's that? Some nice flowers for you in the background. Um, it cannot be emphasized too much that by creating an ideal within your mental sphere, by assuming that you are already that ideal, keyword there, already, you identify yourself with it and thereby transform yourself into its image. So it's so important that when you're imagining the new concept of self, you're thinking, I am already this and you got to feel it that you're already that it's not like you're aspiring towards it it's there if you see what i mean um because sometimes i'm just thinking um yeah hopefully the money comes through and i manage to do this that and the other and that's a great failure of mine that and i have to um think more i'm already this and live in that relaxed feeling and then think, when's the money going? <laughs> um, I'm already what I want to be. Life is great. That would be good every morning if you have a few lines like that. My life's so great. I'm doing exactly what I want to be. And don't sometimes feel, when's it going to happen? I'm actually really disappointed. I'm still in the old state. No, you're not. You're in the new state. It just has not manifested. Um... There was a good, God, he had a brilliant definition of manifestation that I read yesterday. It wasn't in that chapter. And it just, it's just another angle on it, which really helps. Where is it? Um, I will find it. He's just so 
utterly clear, Neville Goddard. Um, here we go. Can't believe I've actually found it. Um, by manifesting is meant experiencing the results of these concepts in your world. It's so clear. I'll, I'll read that again. By manifesting is meant experiencing the results of these concepts in your world. So you've got to um, live in the new concept and that's kind of a bit in the air, isn't it? It's just a feeling. Um, but you experience it in objective reality eventually. And that's what manifesting is. As I'm sure you know. Now, where was I? Got distracted now. Um, I might just wear these. It's getting sunny again, which is good. That's better. Okay. So, I just read, you identify yourself with it and thereby transform yourself into its image. This was called by the ancient teachers subjection to the will of God or resting in the Lord. And the idea of resting in the Lord gives me a very relaxed, um, just really lovely feeling. Just, it's almost like resting in this warmth within myself. Um, but it's saying here, you are resting in the concept of self. And the only true test of resting in the Lord is that all who do rest are inevitably transformed into the image of that in which they rest. Beautiful. You become, according to your resigned will, and your resigned will is your concept of yourself and all that you consent to and accept as true. You assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled and continuing therein Take upon yourself the results of that state. Not assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled, you are ever free of the results. And we don't want to be free of the results. When you understand the redemptive function of imagination, you hold in your hands the key to the solution of all your problems. Hallelujah to that. Every phase of your life is made by the exercise of your imagination. Now, this is something um, that I don't do. One of the many things I don't do. You gotta use it for everything. And I tend to just focus on one or two things and put all my energy into that, thinking I've got to have that, that feeling of the wish fulfilled going most of the time anyway. And he's saying on everything, you know. And so you can do that. It can just be a momentary thing as long as you get that feeling going. Like you have this problem and then you just give it, give it a few moments and you imagine the solution to that problem, how it would feel, the visualization, and then let it go. So you could do it for everything. I think that's manageable if it's just maybe one one or two times, one time, you know, as you think of things. And then you have your main focus of the new concept that you're living in as often as you can. But you're just doing it as a way of life. That's how I see it. So I will try and do that. Where was I now? Okay, when you understand um, the redemptive function of imagination, Oh, I just read that, sorry. But it's good to read it again. You hold in your hands the key to the solution of all your problems. And he's not a liar. Neville Goddard is not a liar. So this is true. It's the only way, people. So try it. Um, determined imagination alone is the means of your progress alone being a very important word in that sentence. You feel that you've got to be doing all these different things and um, it's your fault if it doesn't happen. Um, 
I'm not saying don't take action, but just know deeply that it's, it's through your imagination that it's going to happen. And if you get that right, everything else will fall into place. Determined imagination alone is the means of your progress, of the fulfilling of your dreams. It is the beginning and end of all creating. The great secret is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention firmly and repeatedly focused on the feeling of the wish fulfilled until it fills the mind and crowds all other ideas out of consciousness. And he says repeatedly focus, so he assumes, I guess, that your mind's going to go off sometimes, so you just bring it back, bring it back as much as you can. And that's your main, the main feeling you're carrying around with you. What greater gifts could be given you than to be told the truth that will set you free? The truth that sets you free is that you can experience in imagination what you desire to experience in reality. And by maintaining this experience in imagination, your desire will become an actuality. So you've got to believe that when you experience it in your imagination, you are going to experience it in objective reality. Just thinking, has my mum and dad come out there yet? And then they're going to make fun of me in the garden doing this. So I have to get through it quickly. I'm almost at the end now. You are limited only by your uncontrolled imagination and lack of attention to the feeling of your wish fulfilled. So these are our two main weaknesses, an uncontrolled imagination and a lack of attention. So we have to work on these two things. Um, in another chapter, he talks about um, before you go to bed at night, going through um, everything you've done in the day from the moment you are, um, from the moment you got into bed and going backwards. And that's a really good exercise in um, focusing the attention. And then your attention gets stronger and stronger, like um, developing a muscle, and you can focus better. Um, and yeah, you can focus your, on your imaginative acts more. So I'm going to start trying to get into a habit of doing that. It's just so many things I want to do just before I go to sleep, because that's the important time, isn't it? The, the time when we take things into our subconscious mind. And it's easy to fall asleep when you're doing these things. I did do it for a while, and I learned to do it quite quickly, but I didn't maintain it. And um, then I always think as well, um, try to go to sleep in the feeling of the wish fulfilled, even imagining that I am in a different room um, where I would be if my dream was achieved, um, which is always a good thing to do. So then I think, okay, so I've got to do this exercise and attention going back throughout the day. Then there's another one which Neville Goddard recommended um, once about revising the day. So then I would go from the... Be <laughs> Don't come near me. I would come from the beginning of the day and anything I, I did that I wasn't really happy with, I can wipe out by imagining a more ideal response. But what I tend to do now is when it happens, I just feel it. And so in the moment afterwards, I imagine what would have been a better way of dealing with something. Just to cover myself, because I know I'm not going to do it at night. And then, on top of that as well, there was something else I was going to be doing at night, which was um, an exercise from the Napoleon Hill book, which was called, um, is it The Law of Success? Um, 
and he recommends picking out some people in that you really admire, could be still living, could be dead, that they have these characteristics you want to develop in your new concept of self. So you imagine, just before you go to bed, that um, you are chairing a meeting and they come in, sit at the table and you request of each one of them um, the development of a, one or two or three particular characteristics and they give them to you and uh, eventually they start, to, they start to develop their own life in a way and I thought that was very interesting and I should do that but I think I just started too big and I had too many people in my meeting and maybe I should start with one or two. Anyway, that's probably about five exercises I've mentioned there. I probably would fall asleep in the first one. So I think um, try and do some specific exercises while you're sitting upright on the sofa just before you go to bed. And the main one to do when you're lying down is imagining you're in a bed in a different room where you would be if you achieved your dreams, feeling the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Because let's face it, we're all tired. Um, let's get that warm just before we go to sleep. But I think this is a good exercise about the attention. So um, I think I just need to set aside a good hour before I go to bed to do all these different exercises. Actually, that's not a bad idea, is it? Because I believe in them and I think they're all going to help me. So why can't I? just set aside an hour instead of surfing the internet or watching some rubbish on TV. That's what I need to answer for myself. Maybe that's something I can develop very soon. Um, last paragraph now. You are limited. Am I up to this bit? Okay, you are limited only by your uncontrolled imagination, lack of attention to the feeling of your wish fulfilled. When the imagination is not controlled and the attention not steadied on the feeling of the wish fulfilled, then no amount of prayer or piety or invocation will produce the desired effect. So we need controlled imagination, steady attention. When you can call up at will whatsoever image you please, when the forms of your imagination are as vivid to you as the forms of nature, you are master of your fate. Visions of beauty and splendor, forms of a long lost race, sounds and faces and voices from the fourth dimension of space. And on through the universe boundless, our thoughts go lightning shod. Some call it imagination and others call it God. So I hope you liked that. Um, please put any thoughts down below as usual. I always appreciate them. And if you liked it, please like, please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I just wanted to say um, thank you for the comments of the last clip and um, thank you for the the really nice guesses of my age and then there were some that were a bit closer to reality I, and um, that's okay that's fine and um, the people who got really close they tended to um, make it a bit more gentle maybe by saying it's because of your maturity <laughs> so um thanks so much for that um i i believe it so that's okay but what i found quite interesting is um i was trying to be like i don't care about how i look anyway you know i'm fine with all that it, that's easy to do if you have just had a load of people coming up to you saying oh my god i can't believe it. I thought you were more like 40. And um, I always showed appreciation because 
it is a nice thing to say, but I didn't really feel like a wow, I'm so amazing, aren't I? It was just, oh, thanks very much, yeah. And thinking to myself, I don't really care about this and I, I'm quite neutral about it. But then when um, people were saying, oh yeah, 48 or 47, I should have been, oh yeah, that's still a few years younger, that's good. Or I don't care about this. But I felt, I don't look that, do I? Do I? So it shows that I've still got a way to go with um, dealing with the aging process. Here's a, can you see the bee? I don't know, it's gone now. There's some nice flowers for you anyway. But I'm really glad I raised it. I hope you don't think I'm too vain because I don't, I don't think I, I care so much about it, but I think women care more than men in general. Um, maybe women's focus, and I'm talking in general, not every single woman, is it's got something to do with the idea that we um, are expected in our nature, um, deep, deep in the primal nature of being a woman, it's about attracting a mate and um, then you can have your babies and all that. Um, and so beauty is a precious commodity. <laughs> I'm just thinking of this now off the cuff, so I hope I don't offend anybody. Um, obviously times have changed, but there is still something in that. And even though we don't want to think that that's important, um, you know you know that it is when somebody gives you a compliment and you feel, oh, it's really great. Um, so, I want to accept the aging process as much as I can and um, and then go beyond that to embrace it. And some comments that people said were really good about, um, I think it was time travel, um, just about the imagination and feeling so grateful that we, we have our understanding and knowledge of that. And that really is the most important thing. Like, um, I, for me, I would say love of God and, and um, faith in God um, to be always there for me and to, to manifest what I want in my life so I can fulfill my potential. That's the most important thing. So it was really good just to bring it up and not be embarrassed about it to explore what my feelings were and, and how do I want to go forward. And it's obviously an ongoing process, but um, I feel that I want to pray more every day because when I feel more connected to the presence within me, I just feel just so much better in every way. And um, put more effort into studying the Bible and Neville Goddard um, and just really, really develop my faith that this is the truth of life, how we manifest, how things, the worlds we live in, to be positive and to focus on the positive in life, the lovely in order to live the best life possible. And it's fine to care about um, how you look and to obviously stay healthy, that's the most important thing. But not to fixate on it, not to um, make it too important and become obsessional as some people do. It's, it's something you can have through the imagination um, and it should be something that you expect and ask for good health and, and youthfulness and expect that you're going to have it, but don't get too hung up on it like that's your, your God. Because it does become some, the God of some people, doesn't it? Um, because the world is all about um, materialism. It's the opposite of what we are seeking really the opposite and we have to live in that world 
and we can live in it and we can enjoy it. Um, but we don't have to be of it, as the Bible says. We don't have to be controlled by it. We need to go beyond that because we're so much more than that. Um, so give it a light touch, all your worries and fears. And when things become a bit obsessive, just um, look beneath the surface at um, what's causing it. Just, just be aware. That's the main thing. Don't get caught up in it. Um, we're not going to live forever. Even though we know that we don't live like that. And so we need to try and appreciate every moment and realise we are master of our fate. We are master of our fate, captain of our soul. And we can do whatever we want to do and be whoever we want to be if we can just believe that and relax into it and have that faith. That's the irony of it. To have it, you have to believe it first. You have to believe it first. And um, if you're more of the world, you want evidence first. But the evidence comes through the faith. And I love that. I love the setup even though it can be challenging sometimes. Um, so I would say the main thing for me is continuing to develop my faith and looking for signs that um, I've used it to manifest. And there you go, there's something there, there's something there. And, and that, um, anchors me more firmly, more deeply in it. But I think as human beings, we need these reminders every day. We need to give ourselves a routine according to what we want in our lives, write things down. That gives it that, that concrete feeling, you know, rather than being abstract and you forget things. Stick it up on the wall and start to build these different routines, different habits. And then when you've accomplished one habit and you think, oh, I'm, I'm okay there, I don't need to be reminded of that anymore, hopefully, then develop another one and just live more and more in the spiritual side of life, not being so affected by objective reality, just getting on with it and um, giving your love to others, being gentle with others because they, or they don't always know about this. Not that many people do know. Um, not getting worked up about things so much, letting it go more and more. Every time something comes up which annoys you, just see it as a practice to let go, let go, let go. And you're going to benefit from that the most out of anybody because eventually you won't, you'll be hardly affected at all by harsh words. If you could probably get to a point where you're just not affected. If you're seeing everything in objective reality as the result of past thoughts and feelings, you'd have more compassion for the people in your world and the things because they're caught up in it all and you're not. You freed yourself from the matrix. And so it's just an, on, it's an ongoing practice. And I tell you what really helps me, it really helps me doing these clips because I feel I'm connecting with like-minded people all over the world. And it's a great privilege for me. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware I'm not getting that many views, um, but the people who write are so lovely and um, appreciative that it doesn't matter to me. Um, of course, it's great the more people you reach, but if some people are getting something from this, that's brilliant. And I certainly am. Because I didn't know what I was going to say in this clip. I just thought, I didn't even know which chapter I was going to read. I just wanted to do a recording to connect with others. And um, then things come out that maybe I haven't thought of before, and my faith is reinforced. And so you help me 
and then hopefully I help you. So um, that's, I can't see how many minutes this is, but oh, I think it's quite long. Um, I hope you liked it. And a, if you want to comment, that's always appreciated. And um, yeah, please like, please subscribe and um, anything else. Um, I've just totally forgotten the name. I think it begins with S. Anyway, a lady from New Zealand left a comment last time and um, I, I really appreciated your honesty and um, transparency in what you wrote about your life. And I just have a, a good feeling that things are gonna go your way because you are so open and aware of your situation and what you want. So don't give up. Was it Sonia or was it? I'm so sorry. I didn't even think of checking the name before, but I really appreciated what you wrote and your communication. So thank you so much for that. And thanks to everybody as always. Take care people and speak to you soon. Bye.